So the way that we're typically going to read from files when we're writing our programs in Scala is to use the io.source or scala.io.source uh, type for doing this. So if I want to read from a file, let's see, I have, uh, I have some text files here. Uh, we made one for an earlier video that just has five nums in it. So if I was going to read those in, actually let's go ahead and let's put this in a script. I'll call it readnums.scala. I'm going to import scala.io.source and I want to make a new source. And in order to do that, I call source from file. So from file is a method on the source object that will give me back a source that reads from a particular file. I have to tell the file what name I want to read. We want to read 5nums.txt. So we pass in that file name. Now what this gives us back is actually, I gotta think about this, it might be helpful to see this in the REPL so that we can see the actual types. So we put in our import, and we read that. We get back, note, I didn't actually get back just a source, I got some, back something called a buffered source. Turns out that when you're reading from a file, it's helpful if you read large chunks into memory and then work off of that memory and then read other large chunks as opposed to reading one character at a time off of the file. The other thing you'll note is that we got an iterator off of this. Now we've talked about iterators before, how they're consumed as you go, and that's really helpful for a file. Well, in this case, the file happens to be quite tiny. I could have a file that's bigger than the memory on my computer. And if I had a file like that, I couldn't read the whole thing into memory at once. By using an iterator, we don't have to have the whole thing at once. We have one value at a time. As we read each one, basically it's consumed, and so we never have to store the whole thing. So calling from file gives us back this buffered source, which is a non-empty iterator. The other thing to note is it's an iterator of cares. And we can see that by calling source.next. We talked about how iterators have a next method. They also have a has next. So I can say, is there another character? And it says yes. And then I say, okay, give me that character. And I get four. Well, let's go look. Sure enough, the first thing was a four. And then I call next again. Now, what did that print out? Well, it printed, it looks like nothing until you notice there's an extra blank line here. That's because the character after the four was a new line, telling it to go down to the next line. If I do this again, I get an eight. And as you might expect, then I get another blank line. And then a six, and then a blank line. And then a three, and then a blank line. And then a two, and I believe I have another blank line. And at this point, if I call has next, oh, there is at least one more, another blank line. It looks indeed like there might be just an empty blank line there. Now has next is false, and we can't continue calling next. So creating a source, wrapping it around the file, and the other thing to note now is that the source is an empty iterator. So I've consumed all of the characters out of it, and, and we're done. Okay. When you open a file, when you're done with it, whatever it is that you did, whether you read the whole thing or not, when you're done using it, you really need to remember to close it. And the big reason for this is programs can only have so many files open at a time. If you don't close your files, you'll wind up running out of what are called file descriptors, and you'll go to open a file, and the operating system will say no. Uh, that would be a horrible thing to have happen to the person using your program. So it's good to get into the habit of closing all of your files when you open them to free up that resource. Okay, now, the one problem here is that while technically this file is just a bunch of characters, I generally don't want to treat it as characters. Now in this case, every line does have a single character, but let's make these numbers a little bit more interesting. Okay, so now each one has two digits to it. 
if I were to create a new source, or it turns out that I can do source2 equals source.reset. That takes me back, now I have a non-empty iterator again. I can call source2.next. Oh. And I get the four, and then I get the six. And then I should get the new line. And then I get a four, and then I get an eight. Okay. So I could write logic that would handle these things one character at a time. It, uh, technically, one character at a time gives me all the power that I need in order to do stuff with this. But that's kind of a pain. Okay. Generally, when we're reading into files, what we really want is whole lines. And so for that reason, we'll go ahead and start over. Let's do source2.close. Note that, okay. Now, if you try to read from source2 now, just so you know what this looks like, we're, we're not going to get anything out of it. Uh, so, I say that. Anyway, so we have a method on this. Let's go ahead and make a new source that's attached to this file. Source equals source dot from file of five nums dot txt. What I really would like to do is be able to read whole lines at a time. So turns out there's a method called get lines. Get lines also returns an iterator to me, but this time it's not an iterator of characters, it's an iterator of string. And so if I do lines.next, I get a whole line. And the next one, I get the next line, and the next line, and the next line, which is much more useful. Uh, fun thing that I often like to do, we can read in one of these Scala programs. So for example, like redirect.scala, let's close source, whoop, source.close, sorry. And let's open our source again, redirect.scala, val lines equals source.get lines. I have my iterator of lines here again, and I can do lines.next, next, next. And you see indeed that, whoop, I'm out of stuff to, to read. So we only had four lines in that particular program. It was a very short one. And you can see that I get an error when I'm done. Source.close. OK. So going back to our program here, it would be nice to get the lines. So that I don't forget it, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to put source.close. And then in between, I would do whatever it is that I want to do with my values. Now, these things are iterators. Those are Scala collections. So I can actually take these and do things that I like to do with collections. So this is a whole bunch of strings, but they're all numbers. Well, I want them as numbers. So I can take my lines, and I can map those lines and call to int on each line. And now I would have all the numbers as lines. If I wanted to add them up, I could call print line nums.sum. And what did we mess up here? Number format exception. Oh, <laughs> yes, indeed. There was a blank line. So if I don't want to have to deal with that, heck, we just filter. Filter underscore dot non empty. So we're only going to keep things that are non-empty, and we're going to convert those to integers. And there we go. We get the sum of our, of our five values. Something to note, after this, because the sum has to go through and add them all up, and this is an iterator, they would all be gone. And if I wanted to be able to use them multiple times, I would need to convert that iterator to an array or to a list, okay, whatever it was that I wanted. And that way I can keep using it after the close. The other thing to note, if it's still in the iterator form and you call close, you don't get to use it anymore. So make sure that if you want the data uh, for the whole collection, you convert it to an array or a list before you close it off. So that's kind of an introduction to reading stuff
from files. We'll come back and look at some of the details of how to work with them in the next video.